Let us all that we can to build a better future. All right. For those of you who have not been following our Monday and Tuesday show, um, uh, with Farron on Monday, we covered how Brianna Joy Gray uh, was saying to a guest on our show uh, on the Bad Face podcast uh, that Tulsi Gabbard was correct in calling out the Democratic Party as being a party of warmongers. Uh, let's face it, both parties in reality are warmongers. Both parties are connected to the military industrial complex. On Tuesday's show, uh, we talked about how the uh, I played another clip from Brianna Joy Gray's podcast, where again she rightly pointed out how the Democratic Party, like it does with all these activist groups and organizations, killed the anti-war movement. Most notably, when you had thirty progressives from the Congressional Progressive Caucus uh, quickly run away with their letter, uh, calling for diplomacy and then blaming it on staffers. I mean, that's bravery right there. But I, again, it's like we talked about this before because it's been such it's such a consistent theme that we deal with where they don't care about anti-war. They care about having a stance that's different than Republicans, because when they thought the Republicans were all, in, were all pro-war, they're like, well, we're anti-war. Here's a letter we signed. Boom. We're pro-peace. And then there are a bunch of Republicans all of a sudden they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be going uh giving all this stuff to ukraine all of a sudden they're like okay guys never mind we're gonna give them as much money as they need mm -hmm. now here's the thing and this is something i want to share with our audience unfortunately uh there's a lot of immature uh people who lack critical thinking especially amongst the liberal elite pro-war people and of course maybe bots on twitter that have been attacking brianna joy gray all day yesterday and today with very controversial images, some images that I cannot really share on our platform or else we could get flagged by YouTube because it, <laughs> some of this stuff is downright deplorable. And this is coming from liberals who probably have black lives matter, or we don't say hate in this house signs in their household. So Remember, gonna... we're, we're black. They're, they're all black lives matter publicly until someone's near their front lawn. Now, uh, I want to share this tweet with you guys. Now, this had a deal with a, a, a guest that was on our show. Our interview ended warmly and on good terms. Now he's facing black backlash for his own words. He's attacking my livelihood. I want to thank all of the Bad Face podcasters, subscribers, for their support. Without uh, uh, Which of these threats uh, could really hurt me? Uh, again, th there's been a lot of threats towards her. Thank you for keeping me independent. So what's going on? Well, this jag off uh, again part of a liberal think tank, you know, somebody who's with the establishment, Joe Cicerone uh, said this, and Daniel, you're going to laugh your ass off with this one. I've done a lot. I've done a lot of interviews on the right and left. Oh my God. A liberal on a right show. I've done a lot of interviews on the right and left. Never has a host weaponized the interview to attack me and encourage your supporters to post hundreds of insults and smears without correction. Don't make my mistake. Never go on Bad Face Podcast with Brianna Joy Gray. To what I, I got to say, yeah. what a nutless, cuck, spineless bastard. You go on a podcast. I saw the podcast, right? It did end warmly. What interview are you talking about? And with those tweets of the clips of the interview that she did with you, buddy boy, show me where she's telling her supporters to attack you. Show me the tweets. She's calling you out and repeating words that you said verbatim. Don't get butthurt because people on the internet didn't like your opinion. You go on a podcast. Boo-hoo. Yeah. Cry me a river. He's like, oh, no. She critically challenged some of my points in a way that she could back with facts and logic. My emotions, they can't handle this. Now, again, going forward, uh, and again, these are some tweets that are safe to share. Um, it, it continues on. Because this has been going on all day for Brianna Joy Gray. I don't know how she has the patience, not only dealing with people like, again, um, uh, Majority Report, Sammy Boy Cedar, where he just kept on talking about Jimmy Dore, similar to Jank. She now has to deal with this jag off, just constantly smearing everybody else. So Joe smeared Aaron Maté, again, award-winning journalist, Anna, on my podcast. I asked Joe if you'd be willing to talk to Aaron directly. He declined. I look forward to following up with Aaron, who has always been willing to engage with those who disagree with him. I think we'd all be better off if more people would do the same. To which, again, this is a, uh, a tweet of Aaron Maté saying, again, uh, by asking the questions of Ciceroni, I seem to have weaponized a Twitter reply. You're blocked. So this guy, this guy Joe, who's a liberal think tank person, did the courageous thing and hide like a coward 
and block Aaron Mate. That's not well, how he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get hit by the backlash. Yeah. So again, I, I wonder if Joe's gonna ever because again, the images I I cannot share these images, but a lot of them are really really controversial and horrifying uh, because they're they're going after Brianna Joy's character. And again, I have to be careful what words I could say on YouTube because it's just that bad. And these are coming from liberals, not people associated with any hate groups, but liberals, 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 the vote blue, no matter who crowd. And now they're doing the next courageous thing. They want to fire her. They want to fire me so bad, badly, LOL. Anyway, you could find my fully independent podcast here because apparently now what the, a lot of these uh, vote blue, no matter who people do, they want to go ahead and run to Twitter. Hello. Uh, okay. So the, here we go. A new report about bad faith podcast has been received. Hello, Twitter is required by German law of all places to provide notice to users who are reported uh, by people from Germany via the Network Enforcement Act reporting flow. We have received a complaint regarding your account, Bad Face Podcast, for the following content. Again, profile, all as we have investigated reported content and file is not subject to removal under Twitter rules. So I guess thank you, Elon, for doing something. I don't know. Continuing on, though, it gets even worse, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I want to pull this up here. Uh, now they want to rewrite history. They can't fire me. They can't censor me. So they're editing my wiki page. So now they're saying this in November, 2022 interview. She advocated against preventing the genocide of Ukrainians, which she never said that, uh, specifically the deportations of Ukrainian children to Russia. When asked, we cannot allow this kind of evil to go unchecked. She replied, sorry, I don't. If you see the full interview, if you see the full interview, if you see the full interview, she never said that. So I got this video clip here. Uh, before I pull it up, Daniel, I want to get your thoughts on these childish tweets towards. So uh, this is funny. Brianna this Joy is Gray. like you know, it's it's kind of funny to think about it because the fact that this is happening meant they tried to get her. He he dealt with the Twitter thing. Didn't realize people were going to respond to his words the way that they were. Once people responded to the words, he then tried to immediately cancel Roger Gray. Now I thought liberals were all about demographic based inclusion but i guess not in this case not in this case when it's against him very powerful person get that get that backlash out of the way uh then after that happens nothing happens to her on twitter no one really cares in fact someone that he's refusing to talk to comes out and says i'll talk to them again he's like no no no, i don't want to do that and so what is the only thing that actually is actually accomplished hey uh you have you have uh wiki karma can you can you edit this per this mean person's page, so that that I could I could always point to Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia that everyone can a a a edit and uh, say that she's bad. How pathetic! Well, again, people are stupid. They lack critical thinking skills, and you know what, Daniel? We have every right to treat them and call them morons. So look, it's only fair that we hear the words from Brianna Joy Gray herself. And again, Brianna Joy Gray, I give you this invite. If you would like to be on Hard Lens Media, we'd be more than happy to have you on our show to discuss this horrific and unfair attack that's happening to her character. I've been following her content for quite some time. She's been authentic. She's been who she is. And these words that these vote blue, no matter who people are putting in uh, her mouth or trying to smear her in a way, it's incorrect. Shout out to RBN Network, who also, again, uh, went to bat and defended Brianna Joy Gray from these, again, very... Uh, Let's, I'm going to say it, racist um, attacks towards your character. So let's go ahead and play this video for our viewing audience. Some simpering, warmongering liberals are getting pretty lost on Ukraine, and it stands to cost them a lot more than just midterms. You see, I got into trouble on Monday when on my podcast, Bad Faith, I interviewed a national security expert and former president of Plowshares Fund, Joe Serenzioni, about his critique of the now infamous Congressional Progressive Caucus letter. In my eyes, the letter offered a mere glimmer of hope that the left wasn't going to completely concede its anti-war bona fides to the right, but Joe saw it differently, tweeting, this isn't about the left or rejection of diplomacy. It is about a very small group with a very specific idea of how to force Ukraine to end the war. This is not diplomacy, it is great power politics what Representative Raskin today called a, quote, colonial reflex. Now, of course, 
Nothing in the CPC letter articulated a specific idea of how to end the war, and it certainly didn't force Ukraine to end it on any timeline or under any specific conditions. In fact, the letter lauded Joe Biden's approach to the war and the billions in appropriations Biden has sent via the Ukraine relief packages. But that didn't stop liberals from completely melting down. As a Vox write-up explained, even as many journalists and experts pointed out that much of the letter's contents echoed parts of President Joe Biden's own rhetoric or were otherwise anodyne, international affairs professor and Vox contributor Daniel Drinzer called it a giant nothing burger, critics piled on the members of Congress on social media and picked apart every word of it. And so the courageous progressive lions at the CPC stuck to their guns and LOL, just kidding, caucus leader Pramila Jayapal offered a correction before ultimately retracting the letter the next day. It was a pathetic move that led Tulsi Gabbard to say this completely unimpeachably true statement on Tucker Carlson last week. These so-called progressives did a very simple thing that apparently uh, can appear to be brave in Washington these days. In that letter to President Biden, they just told the truth about how this ongoing proxy war with Russia is increasing in cost and consequences, both on the Ukrainian people, but also the American people here at home and how it's negatively impacting gas prices, increasing inflation, and so on. Uh, you know, the, these progressives in the letter, they didn't say stop sending aid to Ukraine now. All they said was, hey, President Biden, engage in diplomacy. Uh, and the response they got, of course, from the warmongers who control the Democrat Party in Washington was to immediately be smashed to pieces, so much so that these Democrat members of Congress cowered in the corner with fear and now have gone so far out of their way, apologizing profusely for having the audacity to call for diplomacy in this mm -hmm. war that's putting us all at risk. And now they're, they've actually gone 180 degrees in the opposite direction. They're now trying to prove how much of a, a warmongers they too are by saying, no, don't engage in diplomacy. We don't want you to do that. Uh, th this is exactly, Tucker, one of the main reasons I left the Democrat Party. They are completely controlled by these warmongers in Washington. They don't really care about the Ukrainian people. Otherwise, they would have engaged in diplomacy many, many months ago. OK, so look, I want to get this out of my chest right now. Um, again, look, a lot of things I disagree with Tulsi Gabbard on, but a lot of things I do agree with her on. At this point, she's a private citizen. And again, when uh, good old Joe was on Brianna uh, Joy Gray's show he was having a meltdown and literally did a <gasps> gasp shock in disbelief that tulsi gabbard could be correct on the fact that the democrats are a party yeah. of warmongers so, yeah Boy, again I mean, this is the thing that is like it still blows my mind about tulsi gabbard's relevancy in all that we needed was some other person in congress some other person in the senate to say something even close on a repeated basis that she has said it blows and this again. The fact that she's again, she's been covered on rising because this is what we've been saying really a, a critique about the Democratic Party for the longest period of time that goes into the same thing, which is it's absurd that when we want to talk about war and anti war viewpoints, there's no one to talk about except maybe Tulsi, mm -hmm. and then that and then Pete, anyone else is like so outside of the power basis so it's like it still blows my mind like in every respect tulsi gabbard should have been forgotten by now in a somewhat broken or a mostly broken system because there should be someone that is there that can fill in a very simple straightforward niche which is hey maybe we shouldn't be be so bloodthirsty and go to war with everyone maybe we should try and de-escalate those situations but much like a police force, they don't want to do that at all. And so all you can do is like talk to, hey, dude, over there, did you used to work for the cops and you're not really for what they do? Yeah, okay, that's the only person we can talk to. It's a show of how accurate all the things that have just been mentioned are. That, again, it's like we talk about with Case Study and, his, and what's happening to him on Twitter. The fact that Case Study is in this situation of censorship he's in on Twitter is commentary on how bad the news reporting is by mainstream media and commentary about how mainstream media can get away with it. I in, also, the same, in the same thing, sorry, go ahead. 
Well, you know, the thing is, I'm going to repeat uh, what I said on the show when uh, Farron was co-hosting with me. Look, the liberals and all these activists and people who came to prominence in 2016, they would be nothing were it not for Donald Trump. The same Donald Trump who's now, I guess, <laughs> surprisingly calling for diplomacy. Of all people, the Democrats and the vote blue no matter who crowd are losing ground to him. But see, this is the thing about the liberals, and that is they need a villain. They need a bad guy because without somebody like, oh, I don't know, Trump, Tulsi Gabbard, Jimmy Dore, Joe Rogan, Russell Brand, uh, Dave Chappelle, or any other comedian they want to cancel, guess what? Without all those people I just mentioned or anyone else they're calling to cancel, a lot of these liberals and vote blue no matter who think think people, they would be unemployed. They need people to be relevant. Vote blue no matter who is parasitic. And now they're making Brianna Joy Gray into their villain. Because without something to attack or something to really do, they have nothing. They have nothing to ride on. They need someone to blame for their party's failure, for their organizational failure, for the fact that so many activist groups and organizations that have been co-opted by the Democratic Party have become nothing but hallowed husks of what they once were. Without something to attack... The vote blue no matter who crowd and all of its prominent people would be unemployed. They would not be relevant, including good old Joe Cesario. So how do you say his name? Um, are we going to be watching the rest of this video? Yes, yes. Okay, let me say one more thing. I checked on Wikipedia. Those changes that she tweeted about are gone. So that's the lasting impact of Think Tank Boy. Yep, there you go. Now, I certainly disagree with Tulsi on plenty of things, but in, in that clip, I saw no lie. And because I respect Joe Serencioni and am confident enough in my views and my intellect to engage with people who disagree with me, I invited him onto my podcast to discuss it with me. Here's how he responded to the Tulsi clip when I played it for him. If you really believed, like I do and have been arguing for weeks, that Democrats are setting Tulsi up to make that exact argument. Okay. I can't be mad at Tulsi. Tulsi didn't say a single untrue thing there. <gasps> are I'm you sorry. kidding me? It's just <gasps> lie after the other. What are you talking about? Name a lie. Warmongers. Which... Warmongers. The Democratic Party is controlled what, by sorry. warmongers? We're leftists. We obviously know and believe that the Democratic Party is controlled by warmongers. We, the, the, the deep state knows no D or our or, or, or party affiliation. Wait, th th this, this is this is like she not even, even a controversial the, statement. She even lies the about the name of the party. The point why we Sanders. She, she calls it the Democrat. He had a, an issue with her calling the, it the Democrat Party. Like that was the real central concern here on the hearts and minds of Americans. Now, look, the interview was tough, but cordial. Wait, time out, pause We it. ended very warmly yes, and on good terms. Hold on. Uh, Whoever the next. You know, you can even say he went as far as to be a grammar Nazi right there. Oh, <laughs> See, it gets even better. It gets even better than this. And again, uh, a little bit later on, we're going to be talking to one of the anti-war activists that's been calling out uh, these people later on in the show at 530. Uh, so they'll be joining us. Uh, but again, lo looking at this entire uh, situation, liberals can't think for themselves. Next day on Twitter, Joe decided that he wasn't a fan of how people responded to his own words. And he accused me of, quote, weaponizing clips of him talking in our interview to, quote, attack him. He even threatened to abandon Twitter, opining that, quote, Musk's control will make it even worse. Moreover, he said that I, quote, encourage supporters to post hundreds of insults and smears without correction. Now, I sincerely regret that he feels that way. I really did enjoy talking to Joe both times he came on my podcast. But here's the hard truth. Those insults and smears weren't encouraged by me. They were totally organic. People just hated his take, and here's why. Joe engaged in uncritical support for Pramila Jayapal, whom he described as a, quote, great progressive leader, even though she bungled the $15 minimum wage, the Nina Turner endorsement, and the Build Back Better bifurcation. He described Zelensky as, quote, one of the greatest leaders we've seen in a long time, and many of his comments came off as canned and almost jingoistic. He accepted the CPC's narrative that the letter was a staff mistake, and even though Representative Ro Khanna has publicly rejected that claim and stood by the letter, and even though blaming subordinates reflects incredibly poorly on leadership, he kept doing so. But most importantly, Joe struggled to answer one fundamental question. 
What assurances are there that U.S. aid is motivated by a humanitarian drive toward peace rather than military adventurism, especially after it was reported back in May that then Prime Minister Boris Johnson undermined peace talks? Given the United States actions in Libya were thanks to NATO intervention, there are now slave markets, Afghanistan, which we occupied for 20 years, and Iraq, which we invaded on false pretest, pre pretenses and killed a million people. I think it's a reasonable question. Russia has violated international law by invading Ukraine. But given America's past behavior, what assurances can experts like Joe give us that the U.S.'s role here isn't pretextual? That was my only question. And I think it's a particularly necessary question, given that America regularly ignores humanitarian causes like the genocide in Rwanda or Bosnia. And since our own president and State Department officials keep saying that their goal is to weaken Russia, a goal that is not quite the same as protecting Ukrainian people or its borders. Here's how I put it to Joe. They're stealing Ukrainian children. 500 just Joe. yesterday were shipped to Russia. And you, and this is why we should be supporting them. We cannot allow this kind of evil to go unchecked, just on a basic Joe. moral reason. I mean, don't you agree with that? I, I'm sorry, I don't. And here's okay, why. why. Why? There are gangs that have overtaken Haiti. There is a cholera pandemic that was started by the UN. UN members raped Haitians. A third of Pakistan was underwater. Should we go, due to, due to cl the climate crisis, should we go and invade China because Uyghurs are in concentration camps? Tell me, tell me, articulate. And this is the question that I asked Matt Dust when this war first started. Until you can articulate to me what the rationale is behind where America intervenes and where it doesn't, and give me some kind of moral accounting that makes me believe that it's actually about moral commitments and realizing how much of our money and our resources in the richest country in the world can go to saving lives and increasing the quality of life for the most people, as opposed to a, a strategic military intervention mm -hmm. for territory, resources, and political control. If you can articulate to me why this is truly the most deserving humanitarian case on the planet, as opposed to a continuation of these Cold War policies, we want our economic system, our oppressive, by the way, economic system to maintain global dominance, then I can start to entertain a conversation about what our intervention should be, how long, and how much. Now, you can watch a free 30-minute clip of that interview over at the Bad Faith YouTube channel or subscribe on Patreon to watch the whole thing. But for now, you'll have to trust me when I say he never offered a satisfactory explanation. And that's the thing. I, wa I wanted to share this. Go to a barbecue of diehard vote blue no matter who people or diehard Republican red voters and, and really ask them that question. Hey, how would you like it if some country did the exact same thing the United States has been doing to other third world nations? Notice, none of them will be able to articulate a clear answer. Very few, and I'll say this, very few will actually be like, I, I wouldn't like it. All yeah, right? But for the most part, yeah. this, this flies over Americans' heads that we are hurting other countries. And I am very sorry that this war is happening in Ukraine. It, it is a devastating conflict. It shouldn't be happening at all. Diplomacy is needed. I know, controversial statement. I guess I'm canceled, too. I guess that makes me a right-winger now, too, calling for diplomacy. But it has to happen. This war is ridiculous, and it needs to stop. And, yes, there are bad guys on both sides. But if this war continues on and those nukes drop, well, hey, you're not watching any of us because our cities are vaporized. And whatever remains of humanity, the survivors will envy the dead. Daniel, real quick, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I as someone who actually enjoys going to – actually literally exactly describe barbecues of both political extremes. I really, I got to say, I really do enjoy talking to people that I know disagree with me just to see what I can get away with. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to say, in my experience, I've had an easier time talking to and convincing Trump supporters to move away from their positions than I am with Democrats. Oh, are you I, like Daniel? I remember even before we even started doing the show, just when Harlan's media was first coming into fruition, um, how we got attacked by people uh, and got yelled at for saying, "Hey, there's a good chance Trump might win the 2016 election." Oh yeah, they would. We would say that, and because again, we were. It's, it's like it, I, it feels like such a like a lifetime ago, but we were one of the only like news at that point. That point, maybe news adjacent channels or shows or concepts that existed in the u.s where we were like 
Trump, Trump could really win. Like, don't you see the land, the playing field and everyone back then? Because that was at the time when everyone said there's not even a chance Trump could win. Yeah, and, and, and again, I want to play the last remnants of this video. There's only like 30 seconds of it. But look, I mean, show me, vote blue no matter who, where Brianna Joy Gray is wrong. Show me, articulate to me where she is incorrect in her statement. And again, look, all of you could watch her 30-minute interview with that guy, Joe. Daniel, you could watch it. I'm going to rewatch it again. It ended warmly and cordial, and nowhere was Brianna Joy Gray attacking him or being this monster or bully. Um, and again, if you look at the tweets, again, sh show, show me Vote Blue no matter who, where the violence is at. It's all imaginary. It's all imaginary, and these people are yeah. frauds. Well, no, that's the other thing. It's like these people are all projecting. They're more on eggshells. They're more into cancel culture because they're dealing with the reality that they are many of the things that they claim other people are, but they're trying so hard to it's like it's like getting mud. Co they're covered in mud after rolling around the ground. They're like, I'm not covered in mud. You're covered in mud. These are the people that we're dealing with. I think to some degree, as much as the Democratic Party is somehow still going and the U.S. is still invading places and all the things that are happening in all the gray area of all of this, I think that we have to take positive effect on stuff like these attacks that happen because it says that they are their insecurity, they're having trouble covering it. They're having trouble. Like when me and Kit say stuff on the show, you could get back to us in, a, in, a, in two or three times. If, even if we think it's wrong in the future about what we're saying now, we will still be able to say to ourselves and say to everyone else, I don't need to apologize for that. At that time, we did everything right that we thought we were doing. And we thought, and then and we stood by everything we said. Even if we ended up being wrong, they can't ever say that in the first place. Because they know that they're skirting reality. That's why he never has a response from Brianna Joy Gray. That's why he gets a friend at Wikipedia to edit her page. Because he's so angry and vindictive that someone would have the audacity of having an interview and publishing it. Yeah. That he's going to do whatever's in his power to take her down. And that happened to be edit a Wikipedia page. Agreed. At least not in my view. As you heard, he attempted to use abuses against children and emotional ploys so common and trite that it's literally a meme to shame me into dropping my legitimate concerns. And although many blue checks are at this very moment accuses, accusing me of rolling my eyes at genocide, I was in fact rolling my eyes at Joe using such a cliched argument to avoid the fundamental question. Why save these women, these children? Oh yeah, pause it real quick. Ones? Pause it real quick. Go ahead. This gets to the one that I use that's the same, the very similar what Brianna Joy Gray does, is my favorite thing. And I'm really on the spot where I'm like, I don't really care what they say to this or what they think of me after I say this, but it's very effective. Anyone, all, all the people that are like super um, anti abortion, I just go, oh, so should we not do wars anymore since we kill pregnant women with our bombs, innocent pregnant women, innocent pregnant fetuses all the time? And if they, don't have a they never have a response because I'm either I'm forcing them to either be a uh, uh, pro military. Now there's like the the odd libertarian that is able to come along when I make that statement and is like, no, I agree, we shouldn't be at war. I'm like, okay, touche, you're being consistent. But the amount of contradiction that people live with in their life and they just double think it out of existence as much as they can. That's the stuff I like to hit people with, but I like to do it in a way that they don't realize I'm doing it. I really wish I filmed these interactions. They're sometimes fascinating to go through. Yeah, and, and and the thing is, Dan, it's 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 pretty pathetic seeing that this is where the progressive and democratic party has gone. Now, uh, at this point, I'm I'm very curious to see how the midterms will play out. November eighth will be a very interesting night to, to to look at and observe. But at this, as a final note, what I want to say is this: I respect the outstanding work that Brianna Joy Gray has done and what she continues to do and how she somehow, because uh, I know I don't have it in me, have the patience, the intelligence uh, to sit through so much BS, especially from hosts uh, which she's in, or, or, or people that she's interviewing or where she goes on another show. And honestly, I, I truly do respect her charisma and, and, and ways in which she can still compose herself while dealing with so much BS from individuals who are acting like children. So there you go. Um, 
again, uh, these tweets and these attacks to Bray Andre Gray are unjust. And uh, hey, vote blue no matter who. Your uh, inner Trump is showing. Well, that, well, that's the thing. Of course, they're unjust. They couldn't be just. That's yeah. the that's 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 the era. <laughs> that's true. All right. With that being said, we're going to move on now to our next segment. Before oh, we do, well, I'm going to say one thing. That'll well, who's the, what's the dude's name again that was causing all this? Uh, I, was, I already jo- forgot it. Uh, Joe Cesarios, I think. That's hey, what Joe. Saying. Guess what? Pretty soon, we can be blue check marks just like you. Oh yeah, that's right. We win. So there you go. All right, we're going to end that segment there and move on to our next segment. All right, folks, uh, real quick. Uh, be oh, sure to wait, like- real quick, real quick, sorry. Um, I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make a bold prediction, everyone. You guys can call me on it if it plays out or not. Elon Ty has already discussed that he's going to be doing, you're going to have to pay $8 to get a blue check mark and register yourself as a user and whatnot, which I don't know if that's monthly or if it's one time. If it's one time, what a great deal, honestly to like join the blue shank mark rank. We say that as a channel that barely has a Twitter page. Um, But uh, shoot, what I was going to go, right. Uh, Joe's going to leave Twitter. No, right. The mother's thing I was going to make, right. The prediction, I'm getting myself way off track. The prediction is all the people that historically and currently have blue check marks and have been lording them over people for years, they're going to start having their own system of, Oh, how long have you been a blue check mark or some version of that once everyone has it? Because they have to gatekeep somehow, and that's going to be the new way they're going to do it on Twitter. You can mark my words. 